Aye. The fine, are we fined or did it get resolved? Anita, do you want to talk about the it? The Affordable but? Care Act? Yeah. No, it's going to be, it, it's, it's incorrect. I will debate it. And okay. it's very clear that he was not an employee, so it's just going to take some work with the IRS, and that will take some time. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. It looks like a pretty clear, clear cut that we're not really wrong. Mr. Chairman and members of the County Board, your committee to whom was referred management services would beg leave to submit the following report on matters before them. Your committee met at the Administrative Center on January 3, 2018 at 1 p.m. Members present were Barons, Alt, Haspargan, Johnson, McGinnis, Awful, Bowman, Kevin Bowman was absent. Also present, County Board Chairman John Schur, Finance Director Anita Speckman, Maintenance Supervisor Chris Drake, Superintendent of Veterans Assistance Jennifer Ingram, County Board Member Donna Crow and Bob Vetter with Preeminent Development, LLC. The meeting was called to order. It was moved by Charlie Alton, second by Barb Awful to approve the agenda. Motion carried by a voice vote. There were no public comments. Discussion was held on the need for increased office space for veterans assistance. Superintendent of Veterans Assistance, Jeff Jennifer Ingram, stressed the need for increased office space to allow room for a work study. Ingram said, a larger space will also allow her to expand the days and hours of operation and potentially open the office full time. Currently, the veterans waiting area is in the hallway outside of Ingram's office. The larger space will accommodate a waiting area for the veterans and their families. Chad McGinnis asked Ingram for the number of clients served monthly and how many aren't being reached. Ingram answered, our veteran space compared to population is 10%. She is seeing two to four people two days per week. Ingram's claim for the total year, $1 million. It was moved by Sherry Johnson, second by Larry Hasbargan, to move the Veterans Assistance Office to Animal Control Office and move the County, Chairm County Board Chairman's Office to the Veterans Assistance Office by March 5, 2018. Further discussion was held regarding change of office space. Lyle Barron's reminded the committee that the space needs to be available for negotiations to be held. Johnson asked how often negotiation committee meets. Finance Director Anita Speckman answered their meetings are based upon the expiration dates of contracts and there are five contracts. Johnson told the committee that due to the negotiations committee meeting infrequently she would like to continue with her motion to find another location for negotiations committee to meet. Barron's responded that while he is not opposed to locating another office for veterans assistance he is unsure the animal control office is the best place. Barron said there is also a possibility for veterans assistance to switch offices with Ida. Awful question the reasoning behind having a separate space for negotiations. Speckman explained the labor and management sides need to have place to meet separately during negotiations. A typical negotiation session is between four and six hours. McGinnis suggested the Ida office or a break room be used during negotiations. Barron's noted this will take away from employees having a place to take their breaks and lunches. Johnson and McGinnis said for a notice should be posted on the break room door in advance stating the room would not be available for those days. Donna Crow mentioned that Ida Director Ken Berigree's office hours are generally in the morning and negotiations usually take place later in the afternoon. 
if negotiations are held in the afternoon, the meetings could be held in the Ida office. The committee asked Ingram to return to the meeting to speak to her about switching offices with Ida. Ingram told the committee the animal control office is the ideal space to allow room for privacy of the veterans, a work study, and a waiting area. County Board Chairman asked that more details be worked out before a decision is made from the committee. Johnson questioned the amount of items that need to be moved from animal control office. Beckman said she has 30 cases of paper stored in the office and that will need to be moved elsewhere. Animal control documents will be need to be need to be sorted and boxed up. County board documents also stored in that office. Johnson suggested each department be allotted a certain number of cases of paper and they be responsible for storage. Speckman said she will not be able to work on cleaning out the animal control office at this time due to the audit. Members of the committee offered to help with cleaning out the office. McGinnis noted animal control administrator Dr. Yusuf should be responsible for handling the animal control records. A roll call vote was taken on Johnson's motion to move Veterans Assistance Office to Animal Control Office and move County Board Chairman's Office to Veterans Assistance Office by March 5th, 2018. Alt I, Hasbargan I, Johnson I, McGinnis I, Awful I, Barons Nay. Motion carried. Bob Vetter with Preeminent Development LLC distributed information to the committee and spoke about the utility audit they were performing. Mr. Vetter said they do full audits of all utilities. An independent firm performs the audit and looks for any errors, omissions, or credits we have never received. There is no cost if nothing is found, but if an error is found, the company keeps 50%. The firm completes this on a minimum of two-year cycle. It is moved by McGinnis, second by Hasbargan, to move forward with utility bill audit. A roll call vote was taken. Motion carried. An update was given on the county farm. The soil test results have been received and letters will be mailed for fertilizer bids. Maintenance Supervisor Chris Drake reported on the following. Metro Power Service to Generators. An issue with Furnace and 911 Center was resolved. Trent's Lawn Care contacted Drake after they plowed the parking lots and asked if everything had been handled accordingly. Drake offered his suggestions and they took care of it in a timely manner. Drake contracted, contacted the representative from Osram, Sylvania, regarding the electric audit. There is a form that needs to be signed stating we will not release their information. Otherwise, we are still on schedule for the audit. A FOIA request was received by an attorney that we, and we had to provide them with four hours of video surveillance from the lobby of the courthouse. While trying to complete the request, it was found that the CD burner is inoperable. The, to meet the attorney deadline, a de digital camera was used to film the four hours of surveillance and a new unit is being installed today. Barron's asked Drake if the furnace repair repairs will be paid for by the 911 center. Drake said he was unsure and Speckman said she would check into it. The committee reviewed the claims. It was moved by Hasbargan, second by Awful to pay the claim subject to county board approval. Motion carried by a roll call vote. It was moved by Alt, second by Awful, to adjourn the meeting at 1.58 p.m. Motion carried by a voice vote, all of which is respectfully submitted, and I move for its approval.
committee need like 30 days to look at these other things before they go forward on doing anything here? Is that what we're looking at? I didn't understand, Charlie. You said there was some other stuff that comes yeah. out. We, yeah, we, in the past, we had the WEA people and the health department have both expressed interest in that, but they were both told no because it's being used. So now, all of a sudden, even though it's still being used, we're pushing this through. And that's so, not the, that other alternatives were not discussed? No, they were not. So it was, because... It was prepared all the same, what are they, at least? Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm not opposed to finding them more space, but we need to make sure everybody's accommodated, and it is the Iroquois County Administrative Building, so if we are going to make space for somebody, it should be Iroquois County offices first. Yes, but we're still obligated to administration. We are, but we have provided them with a space. And, and like I said, I'm not opposed to giving them more space. It's just we got to make sure that we look at all the options of what we can do and make sure we're using the space appropriately for the county. <coughs> yes? So then if, if we don't have anything that meets their requirements here, are we prepared to find them space someplace else that can rent for them? We're not obligated to. We're already providing them space. That's our obligation. So just because they request more space doesn't obligate us to give them more space. Statute requires us to give them office space and provide them necessary supplies, telephone, printing, and stationery. So if we're doing those things, we're within the statute. Even if we are violating the HIPAA with the privacy issues? Well, are we... I know they have people in the hallway, but... So do the two others that have requested the space. They have waiting rooms in the hallway, and they, I believe, both have HIPAA considerations too. Well, those requests are new. I mean, I, uh, I actually, didn't know anything about those. the well, it was never brought up because it was the space was used, and that's why. Actually, the WEA people were wanting to use it before it was used for animal control. So that dates back a long time. But then it's been vacant since then. But it's not vacant. But it was vacant since then. Correct? In 2014, I think it was vacant for a few months. That would have been when the WEA people wanted it, but I think it, and, and that was a different chairman and what he had in mind at that point. But I think he may have had in mind putting animal control there and that's why it, there again, it was used for county offices. But they didn't specifically come forward again and request this? They have not, but then it... So we just drove it, that up. Well, so it's not officially open. So they didn't look at it just as the health department never submitted an official request, though they would like the room if it was available. Any other questions or comments, Mr. McGinnis? The discussion for moving has been brought up to the management committee a, a few times the past couple months. So I would think if a group really wanted it, they knew it was being discussed, they would have come about and said, hey, we heard it was a presentation and, and you know, you heard a presentation on it, we'd like to present one. And they wait till the last minute to now decide, hey, we want to make a presentation. Bogus. Um, as a vet, the VA centers, um, I didn't know Iroquois County had one when I retired, but they did wonders to help me fix my paperwork. Um, the offices I went through were Kankakee County. They have privacy areas. Um, and those of you know, uh, you know, I struggle with PTSD and lots of things and at the time I didn't want to, to share. I would not share what is going on in my head 
in that office, in this hall. At least that one gives a barrier because there's a back room and the people in between work. Um, and so for me as a, as a vet, and I've worked with, you know, I run a food pantry, um, I have counseled veterans, and one of the biggest things that they battle is they are very, very careful on how they share and disclose. And um, for a long time, I've always thought that, that the effectiveness is not there. Um, now, I am, I asked uh, Ms. Ingram to pull some numbers, and 2015, she was able to help county vets get two, two, 262,000, and 2016, 310,000, 2017, 427,000, and so far for the month of Jan uh, 2018, um, 1,600, which totals a million dollars in, in annual federal money that comes back to this county. And with what her proposal is to acquire some VA work studies, which are veterans going to school, they've come off active duty, um, and so the VA helps to supplement them by offering work studies. Those folks will help reach out. And with the 10% rule, Iroquois County's population is 28,000, 2,800. Uh, statistically, from some of the VA research I've seen, there's probably, based with that number, about 1,500 vets that probably qualify for the compensation or medical or combination of both that would then bring more federal money back to this county let alone helping them and um, so I will be voting no on separating this out I'm going to vote yes that we give that to them the other entities knew we were talking knew that groups were making a group was making presentations it's too late so and of course, I'm going to be biased because I know what will help, and the more privacy we can give, the better. Yes. Sir, let me. You have a comment? Sure. Uh, just to clarify, the the other um, departments have or have not officially asked for this space. That, that, that's why. I mean, we asked. A, a, the health department asked a long time ago, and we were just told no that we couldn't have it. And that was in 2014 when it was open. And then when it was first posted on the door, I mentioned that we would be appreciative of using that space if they weren't going to be using it for animal control because I have seven employees in one room. Three work for environmental health. Well, two work for environmental health. One of them works for emergency preparedness. One is a school nurse. And the other three are... Um, um, adult protective service workers who investigate cases with an alleged vi an alleged victim and an alleged abuser, and they have to do um, quite extensive work with the county sheriff's department and police departments, and they're investigating fraud, neglect, and abuse of the elderly in the county, and that's very private, and it's a room with seven people, and there's not a lot of privacy there. So believe me. I, I absolutely understand Jennifer's request and respect that. have no problem with, with her or the services that, and I understand that she needs a bigger space. I, I, I'm very um, appreciative of our veterans, and I think that, you know, that she has a valid issue. But we, we were just point blank told no. So we didn't keep approaching it because I didn't think that it was, you know, going to happen. So when I was recently asked about that again, and I said, yes, we would love to have that space for the health department because obviously health information is protected, and we have HIPAA issues as well. Okay. Mrs. Crow, just a second. I don't think we're trying to decide who should have that space right here. This is simply a matter of the motion that Mr. Alt has made to send this back to the committee so that these others can be considered. Uh, I think that's what we should be deciding. Uh, I think we're going a little too far afield here by trying to uh, and, 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 and evaluate the merits of one applicant or another over that space. I don't think that's what we're talking about. Please, let's talk about the motion. Okay, well, 
my issue was if I to support that motion, I want to make sure that there was official something that really did get you know, brought up that I wasn't in there. Did I just understand correctly that D said she was approached and asked if they were you I, wanted that space? I mentioned to her before the meeting that before which be, meeting? This meeting. That I had heard in because talking with her earlier that she was wanting the space. I know it sounds bad. I had made looks a comment bad. that we had asked for the space and we were point blank told no. Yeah. But other people were asking for the space and they were given consideration. And I felt like we weren't given any consideration. Now, I, like I said, I, I have nothing against the veterans. I, that's not, you know, that is not the issue. So I, I had, so Mr. Barons was responding to. So I, my, to I mentioned to her that it was going to be brought up. And I wanted to clarify with her that she was interested. And you can shake your heads and yeah, that's fine. But but I, I'm, I, I would imagine somewhere on record, we had a, talked about it in committees in 2014 at some point in time, you know, when we first requested that space. I, so to say that, you know, it's bogus now, that's not really fair. Because we asked for it three years ago. And, and okay, let's, let's see if we can. Are there any other questions or comments? No, Chad has one. Why didn't you tell us that, hey, the health department is going to be interested in this? You never mentioned that. It's just, I, I, yeah. Okay. And. You know, so that's all I have to say is okay. you should have told us this when on the first one. Well, hey, we, we so yeah, I mean, well, we're. Yes. Bills. Yes. Goldman. No. Pro. No. Eleven six. Motion carried. Okay, we have a motion to incorporate it out. Do we have any questions or comments or discussion? During the, uh, the budget meetings, during the budget meetings, I remember the health department was asked if they would help pay their, the, the expenses of the building that they incurred, like electricity and heat and so forth, and they refused. <coughs> Why should we give them more room to refuse to help pay for it? to send it back, right?
Yes. Bills. Yes. Bullman. No. Crow. No. Curtis. Mr. Chairman and members of the County Board, <coughs> your committee to whom was referred tax would beg to leave or to beg leave to submit the following report on the matters before them. Your committee met at the Administrative Center on January 2nd, 2018 at 9 a.m. Members present were Sticknot, McTaggart, Awful, Persley, and, Jout and Whitlow. Crumwitty and Coconaro were absent. Also present, County Board Chairman John Schur, Finance Director Anita Speckman, County Clerk Lisa Fancher, Supervisor of Assessments Bob Yergler, ICPHD Administrator D. Shippert, Animal Control Administrator Dr. Yusuf, and Wendy Davis with the Times Republic. The meeting was called to order. It was moved by Awful and seconded by Whitlow to approve the agenda. Motion was carried by a voice vote. The committee reviewed the claims. It was moved by Whitlow and seconded by McTaggart to pay the claims subject to county board mm -hmm. approval. Motion carried by a roll call vote. The committee also reviewed two claims from animal control. One claim is $1,595 payable to Watsik Animal Hospital, and the other is $1,873.56 payable to the animal control warden. <clears throat> it was moved by McTaggart and seconded by Awful to approve animal control claims. Motion carried by a roll call vote. There were no public comments. Tax Committee Chairman Sticknot stated the Tax Committee received a letter from the Loda Township Assessor and asked Supervisor of Assessments Bob Yergler to explain the letters. Yergler explained a building permit was issued in 2010 to someone building a new home but an occupancy permit was never issued. Yergler said the matter will go to, on to a Board of Review. Loda Township can attempt to collect back taxes, taxes on the property. No action is needed by the committee. The department heads gave their monthly reports. Yergler reported the Board of Review is making tentative decisions. Notices on the decisions will be sent out shortly. County Clerk Kalisha Fancher reported on the election side, they are working on getting the ballots set up. Early voting begins February 8. The Statement of Economic Interest cycle will begin this week. Animal Control Director Dr. Yusuf gave his report for December, which included six dogs picked up and brought to the clinic, two dog bites and one cat bite. Three bats were uh, brought to the clinic and all tested negative for rabies. Dr. Yusuf informed the committee he installed six high-technology security cameras at his facility, which will allow the animals to be monitored at all times. The cameras include night vision for inside and outside the clinic. Stecknot told the committee there are properties in Watsika that have gone in the tax sale and have not been purchased. The city of Watsika has asked the county to to give them the properties, which are mostly lot, uh, empty lots, and they will attempt to sell the properties to the adjacent property owners in an attempt to put the property back on the tax rolls. Fancher said she received a list of, proper, of the properties that have gone to auction, and there were only eight parcels listed in Watsika. Some of these properties are believed to be sold already. 
Under new business, Awful mentioned a complaint that was made by a taxpayer regarding the salt that was used during the first snow. It was suggested that Awful mention the complaint during the management, manage, <coughs> excuse me, the management committee meeting. As there were no further businesses come before the committee, it was moved by McTaggart and seconded by Awful to adjourn the meeting at 9.31 a, uh, a.m. Motion carried by a voice vote all of which is respectfully submitted, and I move for its approval. That home that was discussed was at Lake Iroquois. It's a three hundred thousand dollar home. It's not been on the tax books for five years. I figure there's forty to fifty thousand dollars worth of taxes, the tax money that should have came to Iroquois County. Now somebody's not doing their job. There's no mechanism to follow up on this stuff. Well, the, I know, but the money still is not not there. Period. There's no argument. Now, there, somebody's not doing their job. There's no mechanism in this in in tax or planning and zoning to follow up on this on these building permits. None whatsoever. There needs to be a mechanism in place to follow up on this. This happened several years ago. There was five or six homes. Just at Lake Iroquois, and I don't know about the rest of the county. Pardon me. Well, I will do that, but there's, there has to be something done. Thank you. Mr. Chairman and members of the County Board, your committee to whom was referred health would beg leave to submit the following report on the matters before them. Your committee met at the Administrative Center on January 2nd, 2018 at 9.40 a.m. Members present were McTaggart, Awful, Persley, and Whitlow. Crumwitty and Kokenauer were absent. Also present, County Board Chairman John Schur, ICPHD Administrator D. Shippert, EMA Director Eric Sacy, County Board Member Marvin Sitchnoff, and Wendy Davis of the Times Republic. The meeting was called to order. It was moved by Awful and seconded by Whitlow to approve the agenda. The motion carried by voice vote. There were no public comments. The committee reviewed the program summary for the FY18. ICPHD Administrator D. Shippert noted that there were 153 food permits issued in December. Shippert spoke about the flu vaccines and how the CDC creates, vaccine, creates the vaccine and how effective it is this year. Flu shots will, begin, will be given through April 30th at the health department. Shippert explained the flu is not associated with vomiting and will not cure the virus associated with vomiting. Some flu symptoms include a fever, cough, sore throat, and upper respiratory problems. EMA Director Eric Sacy gave a presentation on the vector control program. The mosquito traps are set in the areas around the county and mosquitoes are captured multiple times a week. They are sorted out by species and then tested positive or negative for the West Nile virus. If a mosquito tests positive, guidelines, precautions are widely distributed to, distributed to the county and local hospitals are alerted. Stacey also said birds are tested at the health department for the West Nile virus if they are received within 48 hours of their death and there is no obvious other signs of death. As there were no 
no further business to come before the committee. It was moved by Whitlow and seconded by Awful to adjourn at 10:19 a.m. Motion carried. All of which is respectfully submitted, and I move for its adoption. I'd just like to make a comment that that uh, was really a good presentation and I enjoyed it. Didn't really know how they found out how a mosquito has this virus, so it was very informational. Thank you. Mr. Chairman and members of the County Board, your committee to whom was referred judicial and public safety to beg leave to submit the following report on matters before them. Your committee met at the courthouse on January 3rd, 2018 at 3 p.m. Members present were Barons, McGinnis, Crow, Curtis, Lamy, Offal, and Whitlow. Also present, Sheriff Derek Hagan, Coroner Bill Cheatham, State's Attorney Jim Devine, Circuit Clerk Lisa Hines, 911 Director Eric Grayman, County Board Chairman John Schur, and Wendy Davis with the Times Republic. Meeting was called to order. It was moved by Barb Offal, second by Donna Crow to approve the agenda. Motion carried by a voice vote. There were no public comments. Sheriff Derek Hagan's monthly report for December included patrol had 586 calls for service for the month of December. Year to date calls for service 6,283. 2016 year to date was 6,326. Booked in prisoners for the month of December. Uh, booked in 41 prisoners for the month of December. Year-to-date booked in 704. Average daily population December 22. Year-to-date average population 29. 2016 was 23. Year-to-date average length of stay 18 days. 2016 was 15 days. Booked in 30 juvenile prisoners for the year. Transported 31 prisoners to IDOC. Transported <coughs> 35 prisoners from other facilities to Iroquois County Jail. Served 1,578 criminal and civil process, civil process papers. Overtime in the jail for December was 235 hours on the schedule. Part-time hours, zero. One deputy off on, workmen's, on workers' compensation. Hagan is working with the workers' compensation company and the county's liability insurance company regarding this. The employee has not been medically cleared for full duty, and the sheriff's office has nothing available that will fit the medical restrictions. Deputy Sheriff retiring in February. Two new squad cars on the way and hope to have them on the road by end of month. Hagen noted the year-to-date average population and year-to-date average length of stay has increased over the past year, causing expenses such as food and supplies for the inmates to increase. The number of juvenile prisoners has also increased this year. Juveniles can only be held at our facility for a certain number of hours before seeing a judge and have to be transported to a juvenile facility. Awful question why Iroquois County doesn't have a detention center and what process needs to take place to have one. Hagan answered, the biggest reason is cost. At some point, a center would generate revenue, but it would take years before seeing a return on your investment. Chad McGinnis and State's Attorney discussed the new bond law and how it would impact the daily population in jail. The monthly probation and court services report was reviewed. Circuit Clerk Lisa Hines distributed her monthly report to the committee for their review. A total of $48,723.34 was received in fines and fees, and $67,590.65 was received from credit collection partners for 2017. Hines is also working with the Comptroller's Office to be able to withhold income tax from those that owe fines. State's Attorney Jim Devine reported he is in the middle of a jury calendar. The murder trial is, a, is tentatively scheduled for April 23rd. Awful asked Devine to explain the sentencing 
behind the battery case involving the owner of the red door. Devine explained the man had zero criminal record and will be serving 180 days in the county jail. He also pleaded guilty to the crime. He will be convicted felon the rest of his life as well as be on probation for four years. Devine added he cannot obtain a liquor license for his restaurant. 911 director Eric Raymond distributed his monthly ETSB report. Raymond and telecommunicator Josh Harris will be attending a mutual aid box alarm system uh, Mabus conference. Also two telecommunicators will be attending emergency medical dispatch EMD training. Raymond noted one telecommunicator is currently on maternity leave and is expected to return in February. The committee reviewed claims. It was moved by Jed Whitlow and second by Awful to pay the claim subject to county board approval. A roll call vote was taken. Motion carried. As there were no further business to come before the committee, it was moved by Vince Lamy and second by Ernie Kernis to adjourn the meeting at 3.28 p.m. Motion carried by a voice vote, all of which is respectfully submitted, and I move for its approval. Mr. Chairman, members of the county board, your committee whom referred transportation and highway would beg leave to submit the following report on the matters before them. Your committee met at the Iroquois County Highway Building on January the 5th, 2018 at 9 a.m. Members present was Bills, Alt, Crow, Hashbargan, and Chad McInnes. Kevin Bowman and Sherry Johnson were absent. Also present, County Engineer Joel Moore, County Board Chairman John Schur, and Wendy Davis of the Times Republic. The meeting was called to order. There was no public comment. It was moved by Larry Hashberg and second by Don Crow to approve the agenda. Motion carried by voice vote. Claims and financial reports for the month were reviewed. It was moved by Charlie Alt and second by Chad McGinnis to pay the bills subject to county board approval. A roll call vote was taken. That motion carried. County Highway was $57,764. County Bridge was $33,796. Township Bridge was $27,516. County Motor Fuel Tax was $36,475. Township Motor Fuel Tax was $19,071. County Engineer Joel Moore discussed an issue that is ongoing with one of our vendors, County Materials. A vendor was held, a lighting was held a year ago for a box culvert in Belmont Township. Belmont Township hired a contractor to install the culvert and there was a mishap during the installation. The supplier was immediately contacted. Moore said there was many, many items that were different from the plans originally presented by county, from the county materials. Moore said if county materials will not voluntarily accept the responsibility, we would like to have them like to have a resolution in place stating they will we will not accept any bids for materials from them for a period of three years. There was no action taken today. Spring posting dates have been posted. Moore said the only changes is that the dates used used to be February one to May one, and now they will be January one to April one. The county has always been done the posting for the townships, but when the dates changed, it was decided that the townships are responsible for their own postings. The annual uh, maintenance letting is scheduled for Wednesday, November 31st at 9 a.m. and will be held at the county highway building. Under Old Business Crow said, said she spoke with a concerned individual about the chapel bridge and they would like to see some efforts made toward reopening the bridge. As there was no further business to come before the committee, it was moved by Crow and second by Alt to adjourn at 9.35 a.m. That motion carried. 
all which is respectfully submitted, signed by all members present, and I would move for the adoption of this report. Yeah, I got one more. <coughs> uh, Russell, uh, down in our area, what, Road 100 runs from East West uh, Loda yeah, goes to 115. Goes, goes in between the two lakes. Is that the one you're talking Pardon? about? Pardon? The one that kind of goes in between the two lakes, East West Road? I can't hear a word you're saying. I've got my hearing aid on. Da oh, Dan, the road you're talking that kind of runs the East West in between the two lakes? Yes, yes. The one we always have problems with down there? It's, it, it gets no attention. It gets no, there's no sand, no, no salt, and it's just, it's terrible. There's about 200 cars that, that travel that road, every, you know, every day. And it's, it, it's pretty dang dangerous. Yes, it and is. And I, I is there any reason why we don't, that road doesn't get any attention? That road gets probably more than tension than a lot of them because it's always been a constant problem area. I, I think they have looked Can't at that it, and I'm not going to state exactly what they're planning on doing with that road, but uh, it uh, seems like it's an annual issue right down Can't there. Can't that be put on a priority? Well, I think it has been treated as a priority. It's, it's, you ought to, you ought to come down there sometime and take a look at that. They, when it's Now, you go up to Buckley... You go up to Buckley on the north side of Buckley, where there's the road that leads to uh, I-57 Exchange. Perfect. That road's just perfectly clean, just the like 45. Does that when they go to the interstate, the state, the state does that. Well, they ought to come down there too. <laughs> you know, somebody's really. I'm serious, though. Somebody's going to get hurt there pretty bad. The, the uh, township and the county roads are, do not get treated the same way, treated the same way as the state roads. The state has a dry, salt, uh, dry road policy, and they stay on it. They treat their roads just I-57. It's a major road. Your state roads are major roads. Your township and your county roads are just excess roads to get to those state roads, and you have to drive differently on those roads when there are certain weather conditions. Where's the Where's the closest? Trucks for county roads down there. Where are they parked at? Yeah, they come out. They come out of Watsika. They come out of Watsika all the way down to Loda. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe that's where they have to come down here and start and work their way back. I, you know, I'm. You know, it's, it's it's serious. I've got a lot of lot of lots and lots of people complain to me about that. Right. Yeah. I understand. Yeah, they leave there and they go and get on a. I-57 and then go really go somewhere then. But they need to slow down on that first section. Well, not only, you know, that's one of the biggest tax bases in Iroquois County is Lake Iroquois and, and Bales Lake. We ought, we ought to have a road down there that's workable. And I, I really think with the information... I'd, I'd board, appreciate it if you could do something. Yeah, I'm really sure with that information Thank you. you gave us on some of those buildings down there, maybe... Uh, yeah, we'll really get that tax base up.
Um, after listening to Marvin with his uh, presentation earlier, I have to agree, you know, there's a lot of rumors and stuff going around. And I think that um, I would, I'm asking that at the next board meeting, not the one with the arbitration, the normal, that uh, we have executive session to discuss um, these, the rumors, because I've heard rumors too that he's, that there's been previous issues of, of, of alleged harassment and stuff, and I think we should um, have executive session to discuss him as an employee with possible with both with action of either you know termination or continuation um, but I think we should get this hammered out in executive session so that we can actually talk because there are a lot of rumors Marvin makes a very very good point on that and some of those are inaccurate and some could be and I think so I want to have executive session on it with possible action for continuation or termination of employment or um, based on our employee policy manual, whatever potential um, corrective action could be installed if it's needed, if any are found true. But if they're found false from our discussion, then we can end this. So, thank you. <laughs>